we dream of a Christianity that looks like Jesus again. We, we, we read the, the words of the gospel and, and Jesus' you know, the things that he said in those red letters. And, and we say, what if he really meant this stuff? What if we were to live our lives based on, on the, the words of Jesus? One of the reasons that we wrote this book is because there's a lot of monologues going on in the, in the world and not a lot of dialogue. You know, there's the Republicans and Democrats, there's the old people and the young people, you know, the Catholics, the Protestants, the over-church to under-church. You know, everybody's like, and, and we said, we need a conversation. You know, we, we, we need to, to have a conversation that crosses the generations because what's happening is like Christianity, evangelical Christianity and Christianity in North America is changing like rapidly. And uh, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about where we've come and where we see ourselves headed. I think that one thing that both Shane and I came to independently of each other that we agree on is that we're not about to throw out the church, uh, that we see beauty in the church. You're, uh, we, got a, we got a whole section of the book on prayer. And, and liturgy, yeah. and the importance of being part of the church. Uh, this is something that a lot of young people uh, are not willing to look at carefully, and they're walking away from the church. And, you know, somebody said it was St. Augustine, but I couldn't find it anywhere in Augustine's writings. I tried because it would have been great for the book. Yeah. He said, the church is a whore, but she's my mother. It's so easy for young people and older people too to see the unfaithfulness of the church as the bride of Christ. Say the church has been unfaithful in this and faithful in that, faithful in this, faithful in that, and I've heard it and heard it and heard it. But like Augustine, I want them to remember the church is your mother. You wouldn't know about Jesus. You wouldn't have the scripture. You wouldn't have the perspectives to critique the church had not the church given you that critiquing material and that scriptural basis by which you can make your judgments. Love the church in spite of its unfaithfulness and work hard to make it more faithful. So it's, a, it's not an anti-church, we're tearing up the church kind of a book. It's really calling individuals to be faithful. It's a free sermon. It's free sermon. See, that's what happened. See, when we wrote this book, we, uh, that's why we needed really good editors, you know, so that we could, uh, no, I'm, but. Uh, we know, really did. What was it, like 600 pages when we finished putting it together and they had to edit it down yeah. to about 250? That's how we wrote the thing. We, we sat down like this, we had a conversation and it got transcribed and then we said, man, we are, we talk a lot. And so we, we trimmed it down and so this is, uh, this is the, the, the meat of that conversation and it's an invitation not just to hear us talk, but to join the conversation.